Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I am here to give a week 17 update for my 55K page challenge. And this is where I have challenged myself to read 55,000 pages over all formats that include print books, digital books, and audio books. So what have I read? The first was The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. That was an audiobook. It's worth 400 pages, but as it's a nomination for the Booktube Prize, I cannot talk about it. The second one I read was an ebook. This is Five Decembers by James Kersel. It is published by Hard Case Crime. Um, and I do love the Hard Case Crime series. I don't read as many as I used to. Um, when they were published by Leisure, books in paperback. I was a subscriber and I have the whole initial run of those early ones. But this is a newer one, and this is an historical murder mystery set in Honolulu. The dates are starting at November 26, 1941, and the detective Joe McGrady discovers two murdered bodies. Um, and as he's investigating, a, a third suspect shows up, which he has to shoot dead. Now, this is not a big spoiler because this is very early in the book. But anyone who's familiar with history knows that on um, December 7th, some big event happens in uh, Honolulu. And so this is very much a murder mystery tied up with um, Pearl Harbor. And um, it is quite an intriguing mystery because um, it's, it's not just a murder mystery. Um, it does contain some travel outside of the United States during World War II and um, what Americans would have to, to go through being in Japan. And um, his main focus, of course, is that he wants to find the murderer of these two victims. And I can, I can highly recommend this book. Um, as, as I said, it's not just a murder mystery. It is a historical novel, and it is the growth of uh, the detective and what he has to do to solve his mystery. So highly recommend it. Um, I bought this last month when it was $1.99 on Kindle. I did check this morning, and it does look like it has unfortunately gone up gone back up to being full price. But um, it might go on sale again. And if it does, I can... I would highly recommend just grabbing it and um, putting it on your Kindle for later. And that is um, worth 446 pages. The next book I finished was also an audiobook that is nonfiction work, Islands of Abandonment by Cal Flynn. It is 394 pages long. And this is the journalist going to places where humans have abandoned their, their hold on a piece of land. Um, of course, like places like Chernobyl, and even more interesting, Detroit. Um, the city of Detroit was at one time a very robust and thriving city when it was a one, one town, basically, they relied on auto, automobile manufacturing. It was a one industry town. And when that industry started going other places, the city lost its, its stronghold and whole vast blocks of the, the city are now abandoned. And the author takes you in to what it's like to live in these abandoned places or just walk through the abandoned streets of downtown Detroit. Um, and she does take you to other places. And more interestingly, it, she tries to be a little optimistic. She wants to show you how, how life can return to these abandoned um, places. And it's not always the life that you would expect. Um, it may not be the original life forms that inhabited this area before humans uh, made their devastation, but it is still life. And that's another one that I can, I can highly recommend. Now, those are the, the, the books that I completed. But also, um, I've been going on a little side uh, voyage into short stories and essays. Um, the first short story that I read was Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge by Ambrose Bierce, and I listened to that as an audiobook. And the reason I picked that up was uh, last week I finished another Book Two Prize book, 
which strongly features elements of this short story. And it made me want to, to revisit this short story. Now, I read this short story long, long ago, probably in high school or college. And I do remember images being filmed in black and white. And it was only until a commenter on my video mentioned that it was a Twilight Zone episode. So um, I could always revisit this as a Twilight Zone episode. But this is just a great short story of um, a Civil War spy getting ready to be hung on a bridge and all about his escape. And uh, as I said again, it does tie back to one of the Book Two Prize books. Um, I won't say much more about that, but um, I do think the short story has the edge over the, the Book Two Prize book. Second is I read an essay, Notes of Camp, by Susan Sontag, and that was on my Kindle. And the reason I picked up this is that there is a secret meeting of booktubers discussing what is going to be the greatest event in booktube history. All other booktube events are going on the trash heap of history after this book. Um, but uh, Juan at Plague by Visions mentioned that parts of this essay were relevant to what we are doing. So I had to go pick this up. And this is an essay where Sontag is talking about camp. And you all know what camp is, maybe. This is something that was campy. And um, it was sort of enlightening. Um, for my purposes, she was a little too academic. Of course, being a, that's what she did. She, she wrote about academic uh, subjects. So um, she's doing exactly what she was supposed to do. And it's just me going in, and I would prefer a, a little less academia, but still a very good essay. And then there was another short story, The Alf by Jorge Luis Borges. And again, this was a short story that I wanted to read after reading a book two prize novel. And um, without saying too much, let's just say that there is a character in that novel called the Alf and named directly after the, the Borges short story. So I wanted to read that short story. And the short story involves a writer, maybe Borges, maybe not Borges, who is um, talking with someone else. And that person has this point in the universe in their basement that contains all other points and times in the universe. And it is just very classic Borgesian short story. Um, very, very well done. And just, there is something just so unique when you crawl into the headspace of Jorge Luis Borges in one of his short stories. And then I read another short story. And this was mainly because um, the short story collection that included Alfie Bridge had like five other short stories. So I listened to Ethan Brand by Nathaniel Hawthorne. And again, this is a short story that I most certainly read when I was back at university. And this is about a man trying to find the unpardonable sin. And he used to work in a line works and kilns with, with, with marble and turning them into useful products. But he goes on an 18 year mission to find the unpardonable sin. And most of it is like, I was just kind of curious why that'd be so fascinating. I mean, I, I am not Catholic. I, I don't worry about sin or that part of the religiousness. So really, this is a short story I, I should have saved for maybe Midrash this month. But um, I read it, and it's good. Um, I'm, I don't think it stands up with Hawthorne's other really classic stories like um, what's it, Rappuccini's Daughter and Young Goodman Brown, but still a very good one. And then, to top it off, I have to admit defeat. I DNF'd a book. And that was Walden by um, Thoreau. And I was reading this with um, the 1001 Book Club, run by Miss Reads A Lot. And um, this is a reread for me. And so it wasn't such a high priority to get this done. But upon this reread, I became really rather annoyed with Thoreau. In many aspects, he's just an excellent author. He, his prose style can be very engaging, even though a little bit thick and complex. 
But the main reason I got annoyed was Thoreau kept talking about building your own home, growing your own food. And if I had to build my own home, I would go absolutely nuts. If I had to grow my own food, I would be way beyond nuts. It is just something that I would never want to engage with in my life. So I DNF'd this at 109 pages, and um, but I've read it before, so it's really not that big of a deal. So what does that put me up to on my page counts? The With the short stories, and the audiobooks, and the digital books, it puts me at 1,406 pages for last week. And that puts me at 21,067 pages for the year. So I am well on track to finish my 55k page challenge. Now what's coming up for May? I have a lot on the table for May. Um, I probably have more than I can um, finish, but the eyes are bigger than the stomach. So what am I doing? I am doing horror mayhem. I am a co-host and um, for the first week it is a supernatural being or creature week and what I have chosen to read is Killer Flies by Mark Kendall. This is about genetically modified flies that um, go on a hungry rampage. And um, it should be a lot of fun. It should be something I can knock off rather quickly. Also for Creature Week, I want to read a short story. And um, I have this uh, book of uh, short stories, The Ghouls. It's all based short stories that were turned into famous movies. And the one I am going to read is um, uh, The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms by Ray Bradbury. I believe the original title of that short story was called The Foghorn, and it's only like 10 pages. So um, I don't know how much of the, 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 the story will go to the, the book, the novel. The novel is all about a prehistoric beach that goes on a a giant you know, prehistoric beast that goes on a rampage and who knows what the short story is but it should feature a fun little creature also uh, i am in the humorous book group which is run by mark over at book time with elvis and we are doing a two-month read of a very famous czech novel the good soldier fake and that is by Joseph La Hasek, and this is the story of an imbecile and his adventures after World War II in Czechoslovakia. And um, it should be a lot of fun. I am also doing maybe Midrash. Um, and one of the books I'm going to start pretty soon is going to be God, A Human History by Razor Eslan. I am going to do this as a buddy read with a Stephanie Cohen. Um, and it is the story of um, how humans create images of God, basically in our own image, I believe. So that will be a great start to maybe Midrash. I am also starting uh, next week, going to be reading The Monk by Matthew Lewis. And that is going to be a group read with uh, Vin over at Revenant Reads and uh, Mark at Book Times and Elvis again. And um, there is another person in that group and I'm drawing a complete blank. I am also going to try to do May of the Moderns because I'm just can't have enough on my plate. Um, I have already started listening on audio Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence. Um, I will also be reading another book that classifies in that period. That will be um, later this month, and that will be the, the Bridge of the San Luis Rey by Thornton Wilder. Sometime in this month, I'm going to try to squeeze in at least one other book that will qualify for May of the Moderns. But wait, I'm not done yet. I'm doing a buddy read with Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics. And we are reading Breakfast of Champions by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, I've, all, I've read a whole lot of this yesterday, so um, I should be finishing with this tonight. And it is classic Kurt Vonnegut. It is the story of 
the novelist Kilgore Trout and how he is going to encounter a, a, a car salesman. And it's going to lead to Kildor Trout becoming the greatest novelist of all time, and so on. A fabulous book. Really, Kirk Conniger is quite unique. And again, I'm going to be doing one other read. Um, there is a two-month review podcast. Um, they normally do very large novels over two months. But this time they're doing something a little bit different. They're, they're doing two shorter books that are connected. Um, it is Never Did the Fire by, by Damila Ilat. She is a Chilean novelist who is known for uh, anti-Pinochet activities or sympathies. And it is a book about the violence in Chile and is translated from the Spanish. Now, the, it's only a short book. It's like 155 pages, but the trans, it's a brand new translation. And the translator kept a diary of his translation called Catching Fire. And he is Daniel Hahn. And that's also been published as a book. So the, the group on the Two Review podcast is going to be reading those two books in tandem, saying, this is the book translated from the Spanish. And here is the translator's notes about his journey translating the book. So that should be quite interesting. And that is my wrap up for week 17 and my TBR for May. Goodbye.